You've asked for more family-friendly recipes and this is one of them. This is a tuna and potato bake full of flavour that the whole family is going to like. I've just been frying off some onions and to this I'm going to add some silver beet. Silver beet is full of flavour. If you didn't want to use silver beet, you could absolutely use some spinach or other leafy greens like kale. And because it's a little tougher down the base here, I'm going to cook the stalks first. Again, loads of flavour in the stalk and there's no point wasting it because it cooks down really well and also gives loads of flavour. So we'll start with the base there. Depending on how big your silver beet leaves are, you probably only need about three to four leaves. So in with the stalks and we just want to soften them up with our onions. With all of these leaves, we're just going to scrunch it up and then cook it down. This recipe is super adaptable. You can add loads of different vegetables depending on what your family likes. So if you wanted to grate a carrot, you could add it at this stage. Some celery, um, even other vegetables like sweet potato and pumpkin is a fantastic addition to this base. Right, we'll just let that cook off for a moment and we can get on to the glue that's going to stick the tuna and the potatoes together. In a bowl, I'll add three eggs. So we'll just crack them straight in, one, two and the last one, in it goes. I don't want this to taste too eggy so I like the addition of some thickened cream. We want about 300 mils, we'll pour that in and to give this some flavour, freshly cracked pepper, a good pinch of salt. And I love my cheese, so I'm going to add some parmesan, freshly grated parmesan for this. You could also use some cheddar. So we want a good handful of parmesan. I'll also keep this parmesan on standby because I'll add some more to the layers. Some oregano and we'll just grab a whisk and then whisk all that together. Good. So we've got our sliced potatoes, we've got our cream and egg mixture, our tuna, and then to finish this off, I'm just going to add our silver beet leaves and let that cook down for about five minutes or until it becomes quite wilted. much the silver beet has cooked down. I've just turned the heat off and we can start building. So just in a baking dish of your choice, a little extra virgin olive oil and just get your hands in there and just make sure that you spread it evenly. We don't want anything to stick. We also want to form a little crust on this. So I'm just going to use some breadcrumbs just to sprinkle on the base and just around the sides. I like to start with a potato layer. These are just Desiree potatoes that I finely sliced. You can do this on a mandoline or if you're going to do it with a knife, just be really careful. You also want to get them roughly the same thickness so they cook evenly. So that's the first layer. And I'm using something round just to form that bit of a rose shape around the baking dish. Just press down on it. We want it to be quite compact as it cooks. I'll add some of the onion and silver beet mixture spreading that, just a nice thin layer of everything for this. And for our hit of protein, some canned tuna. I've just drained the tuna and we just want little speckles of it throughout the whole dish. So just sprinkling it over. You'll need two cans of tuna for this recipe. And this is where I pour over some of our cream mixture, just a small drizzle. I also like to add some more cheese. And now we just continue on with the layers. So back to the start, the potatoes. Okay, we're just arranging the last of the potatoes over the beautiful tuna there and a few more just to cover it up. And it is quite full, but you really want to press down on it. Another sprinkle of breadcrumbs and then for a golden finish, lots of parmesan. So we'll just rain that over. 
Okay, done. So I'm going to glad foil this and it's going to cook covered for about 30 minutes. I'll remove the foil and it cooks for another further 20 to 30 minutes. And in the last 10 minutes, what I like to do is add some cherry tomatoes just for a pop of sweetness and it looks fantastic. That's my jazzed up tuna bake. Layers of potato, silver beet, onion, that lovely tuna. This is a dish that I do over and over again because quite simply, it's a crowd pleaser.